verses from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. When my parents joined me in Washington, D.C., after I had spent a month on the Civil Rights Trail, they asked me, how did it go? What did you learn? All of the questions all of you have asked me. And I remember saying to them, I have learned about how the capacity that human beings have for hatred and violence, and that it is much, much deeper than I ever thought possible. And I have learned about how incredible our capacity for hope is, more than I ever imagined. And those words and those ideas have been running through my head and my heart and my soul in the weeks since, especially as I've tried to re-enter into the world again. But it's hard to forget those images and those pictures. And a little part of me grieves my naivete from August. And so I found myself struggling with what to say to you all tonight, which is a problem, because here I am talking to you. I know what I'm expected to say. I have pages full of those words, but they all fell flat. As much as I love this beautiful introduction to John's gospel, these words hit me differently. I saw them with new eyes. And in the light or darkness of humanity's capacity for hatred and violence, these felt like empty promises and empty words. I want desperately to believe the promises of light and life, grace and truth. I want to believe that the darkness doesn't win, but wow, it sure feels like it does sometimes. And that no words, no matter how poetic, are going to fix it or make it better. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you know days when we can't see past our pain or sadness or loneliness or grief or uncertainty or anger. 
when every task we manage to do feels like it was 100 times harder than it used to be, when getting out of bed is a chore and not getting back in at the first available moment is the hardest temptation to resist, looking at the world and seeing only darkness, or when the darkness closes in, overcomes and overwhelms us, and the last thing we want to hear is about light and life, grace and truth, and yet it is exactly what we need to hear. A couple weeks ago, I was reading from Paul's writings, and he exhorts those who were reading this particular letter to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and give thanks in every circumstance. Always, Paul. Without ceasing, Paul. Every circumstance, Paul, really, is how I responded. I know, Paul. I have a conversation with Paul regularly. I know you met Jesus on the road, and it changed your life. But seriously, read the room already. It's not what humans can do. I wanted to walk away and ignore him. But after my brain resisted the notion of being able to do any of these things ever without sounding like a naive Pollyanna, I began to imagine or try to imagine what would have to happen in me so that I would be able to actually, actually rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in every circumstance even those that are awful. And I think I've settled somewhere around trust and hope, grace and truth in the life that was the light to all the world. Truth that the gospel of Jesus is for me and for you. Hope that it's real even when I can't know for sure. And grace for myself and others when I'm frustrated or angry or ashamed that I can't believe the way I'm supposed to. And just be done with this. Of course, that doesn't diminish the pain I or you or anyone else experiences as part of this life we live, nor the unhelpfulness of the platitudes that come when people try to help us feel better, which is why I suppose I'm struggling a little bit tonight. Because I never want someone to read scripture or to listen to a sermon and come away thinking that their faithfulness isn't enough, as if there's a predetermined threshold they have to meet before the God stuff kicks in, or that they aren't loved no matter where they find themselves. When all is dark around us, it's hard to trust the life that brings light, much less be certain about it but we so very much want certitude. We want to know the why of things. But in the wake of a loss, anything that was certain, that had the answers, that helped us feel known and love is completely upended. And we're left with this vastness of the unknown and the unanswered questions. It's as if we live with one foot in the certainty that we have lost something and another foot in the unknown, not knowing what is next or how we're going to possibly move through the pain. Here on the longest night, when the darkness crowds in more than any other night, we gather together to remind ourselves that in the sadness and loneliness, grief, anger, and uncertainty of our lives, we stand as witnesses for each other that the light of Christ lights our way through the darkness. It doesn't completely banish the darkness. It doesn't take away all the pain, but it does hold it back enough for us to see, for us to take a breath. Tonight we live in both the longing of Advent and the light of Christmas, remembering that we can trust in the grace of God and the truth of God's love that is ours no matter what that these things are not dependent on our ability to believe or to be happy or to get out of bed or to do the things that people think we should do. God's steadfast love, as evidenced by Jesus, is ours. We have seen Christ's glory, full of grace and truth, grace to not always be perfect 
and the truth of the steadfast love that does not go away. That steadfast love, while seemingly elusive, shows up like light in the darkness in the stories of our ancestors. When the prophet Isaiah foretold that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. When the psalmist promised that weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Or when Zechariah proclaimed that by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. Or when Mary reminds us that in the midst of the things that overwhelm us, we can sit and ponder and trust in God. These are the witnesses to the light that darkness cannot overcome. That steadfast love, while seemingly elusive, shows up like light in the darkness through this community, through those who gathered together here tonight, or for those who have come alongside us to remind us that we are not alone, those who sit with us and cry with us, laugh with us, and walk through the uncertainty with us until we find our feet again. These are the witnesses to the light that darkness cannot overcome. So I invite you, as we sing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, to let these songs sink into your heart and your soul and be just one more reminder that despite everything, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Please stand. Thank you. 